All right, we are back for the second half. We finished the first half, which we had the first quarter and the second quarter where we spoke about how she started as a basketball player, a background growing up in the US, uh, her relationship with her parents and then her siblings and all that. We also spoke about the national team uh, adventure so far. But this time around, we will look alive and also touch briefly, briefly on what she has been able to achieve at the, with the national team and also at the club side. She has played in Germany, she has played in Portugal. Right now she's in France, doing her thing. And then we also we have to speak about that. Because, um, the best point guard, the French league, that's a massive coming from an African player. How many seasons have you spent, spent in France? Uh, this is my second season. Then for, for half of two. Around the best guard, and I think um, top five, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think that's that's amazing. So in the course of this conversation, we also we also ask uh, about uh, you know, playing in France and everything like that. Despite the fact that she has not found love yet in France, we hope that that will happen very soon. Because I know that French men are very romantic, and then young sister, you need uh, to be romantic. Now, let's look at uh, the busy calendar ahead as caused by the coronavirus. 2021, 2022, we're going to be playing at the Olympics, playing the qualifiers, and then also defending our title at the Afro Basket. Um, starting with the Afro Basket, 15 straight wins for, for Nigeria since 2017. We've never lost at that level. First time in history, in the, in the history of Afro Basket, despite the dominance of um, Angola and also Senegal at that stage. We've never had it so good. Um, are you guys under pressure to continue that ambition or not? Or you think one day, one day, you guys, that that hell is going to come? Um, I do think that we're, we do feel the pressure. Uh, not from really um, everybody else, but more so ourselves, because we know that we have to live up to what we've created as a team. And <laughs> Um, there's no like there's no turning back. Like we can't just start losing or lose one game, then win, then lose and lose. Like we can't go backwards. Like the only way we can go is forward. And the fact that we have to, we put ourselves in that position, the pressure is on us to keep succeeding and to keep making Nigeria proud to say that we're the best and undefeated. So we definitely we definitely feel the pressure from ourselves and from uh Nigeria as a as a whole country. This newfound status of uh, Nigerian basketball uh, when it comes to the women, um, how are you coping with it? Um, I'm coping. I mean, I feel like women basketball has definitely has not get, gotten the recognition that it has gotten. And it's starting to get that. It, and I feel like we definitely do have some more work to do as far as support, as far as payments, and just people, you know, realizing and getting people to realize that, you know, women has what it takes to play and to show what we can do. Why do you people like money? Why do you huh? like money? Right now you spoke about payment. Yeah. And then I, I spoke to um, Evelyn yesterday. She was all about money. She, she's playing basketball. Because why do you like women? Why do you like money? Because it's, Money is good. It so it supports your family. It supports you. It allows you to do whatever you want to do in life. It allows you to, you know, yes, eat, to eat. It allows you to support yourself. It allows you to to do anything you want, and to be paid to do something. To do, if you're good at something, and you get paid, you want to get paid as you want to get paid at the level that you're good at your the level of your strength, right? So I feel like if we have these athletes who are really good and they're not getting paid to the, as well as their talent, then it's kind of like a uh, it's kind of like a smack in the face. You you're one of the few guys on the team that has played under different coaches. In 2016, you played under Scott Unadu. In 2017, Afro Basket, you played under Sam Vincent, and oh. um, 2018, 2019, 2020, you played under. Coach um, Otis Uli, tell us differences between these 
OGs are also your favorite. Uh, that I'm not going to answer, but I'll answer the other questions. Um, all three coaches are definitely different. Uh, Coach Scott is definitely more so um, methodical. Well, he was with Coach Morrow. They coached together. So Coach Morrow was the, was the head coach, and he was more so methodical. He wanted a half-court set game. He wanted us to really focus on the offense and focus on the plays. And um, I don't think that was really our identity at that time. Uh, Coach Sam Vincent, he brought the killers and monsters out of us. Uh, he edu introduced us to the 50, 55 defense full court, you know, pressure, being in face, being aggressive and up all up on you. He just, he brought a different intellectual side of the game and mentally. And, uh, yeah, he definitely brought like a breath of fresh air to the game. Uh, Coach Otis is more so. Uh, he's definitely all around, uh, all around guy. But since he uh, he definitely coached men most of the time, so him coaching us women for the first time is definitely different to see his game plan and the way he thinks the uh, uh, the way what he thinks the game of basketball is, and it definitely gelled with everybody. I think that he definitely brought the fire fire up out of us as well, like Coach Vincent did. Uh, he forced us to play 40 minutes. He forced us to give us our all. He forced us to, you know, to give 100% regards to the situation. And he definitely loved his Bible scriptures. Yes. Be... He, huh? I'll, so... I'll be with the Bible, the Bible side, the spiritual side. I, I, I've been coping. I've been coping. I'm learning different scriptures every training, every practice. So yeah, all the coaches are definitely all the coaches are definitely different in their own way. So what's his favorite, uh, favorite Bible Bible verse? Um, probably my small fry coach growing up when I first started playing basketball. Hello. <laughs> I said, I said favorite Bible coach. <laughs> My Bible, my favorite Bible quote. Oh, I think you said my favorite Bible quote. Yeah, but um, I, my favorite Bible quote. Uh, my favorite Bible quote. I think it's by. Which verse says, "No weapon against me shall prosper"? Which verse is that? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Maybe Psalms. Or maybe John. <laughs> or maybe Corinthians. Hmm. God forgive me. Okay. Um, <laughs> so is it safe to say that um, the, 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 the best coach that you've ever worked in on the national team would be Sam Vincent? I don't have a favorite. I think each coach brought something different to the table and I could take away literally one or two things from every coach. I could take away something from every coach. And as long as I can do that, you can be my favorite. As long as I can and take something from you at the end of the season, or as long as I can learn something from you during the season and really, you know, get better as a player and as an individual, then that's all that matters. So I don't really have a favorite. Currently number 16 in the world, number one in Africa. Um, of recent, we've been pushing for the top spot, trying mm -hmm. to tell the world that we are doing something right. This is the time for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, at the Olympics right now, 2021, how far do you think the team can go? Again? We're going to the podium. We're definitely going to the podium. Uh, that's definitely the plan. That's definitely the goal. Uh, what did you expect me to answer and say, oh, we're going to do okay? No. My, our goal is to make it to the podium. I know that Nigeria wants us to make it to the podium. And I don't care if it's bronze, silver, or gold. I just want us to make it there. Um, I do think that we have – I do think it's possible. It's not going to be easy at all. It's definitely not going to be easy. There's so many teams standing in our way, standing in our way. Uh, but I do, I'm, I am confident in us. I think that we can definitely, you know, compete and we can definitely, you know, work hard and really, you know, be that team who could be on the podium. I definitely think it's possible. So with the current material that we have uh, mm -hmm. available for us right now, present in the national team, 
do you think that is possible or you think there's a need for us to beef up um, that, that some interim areas? Uh, we definitely need to perform, well, fix our performance in certain areas. Uh, I definitely think that we need a little more preparation to be able to be step up on the podium. We definitely need to do a little recruiting to step up on the podium. We definitely need to make some like, you know, getting to the place on time, you know, having the right meals, having the right recovery time. We definitely, definitely need to have all that in order for us to compete at that level because these teams, they, they have all that. They have the access to what they need to, to be successful. They have the access to everything they need to, you know, to feel like they are a team and to stay a team. So if we had all those things in place, if our, if our, you know, federation just got together and really just like buckled down and really focused on, you know, what we're trying to do as a whole and as a Nigerian, as a team, as a woman's team at that, I think that once we really buckle down and fix all those things and make those corrections, then the, the, the road to get into the podium won't be, you know, won't be as hard we'll have a little stress off, off our shoulders. Biggest challenge ever faced uh, as a basketball player? Yeah, the biggest challenges that I, I faced were probably the injuries. Um, I tore my ACL, I tore my rotator cuff, I broke both my wrists, I broke both my thumbs, I broke my ankle. Yeah, so probably maybe the injuries have always been the, the challenges for me because people don't understand that when you're injured, that kind of like gives you like a mental a mental picture of like your life flash before your eyes and and when I told my, my ACL specifically that was one of the injuries that I kind of think that I didn't I didn't was I didn't think I was going to come back from so that was uh, my toughest challenge because I was away at school um, I didn't really have you know my mom there to really take care of me and nurse me back to the good health but thank god I had my teammates I had some friends who were there around to really support me and really motivate me and push push me through the pain and my trainer there, he pushed me as, as hard as he could to really give me back to 100%. And, but, yeah, that was one of my toughest challenges because I thought I was going to give up the game of basketball. I didn't think that I was going to come back as strong as I did or as fast as I did. So, yeah, once I got through that challenge, like the first two, three months, I was, I, it was smooth sailing for me. Um, you've broken virtually every available body parts that you, that you can think of. I'm sorry? I said you've broken all the... Yeah. Parts that we can think of. Have you gotten your heart broken before? Uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, I definitely have gotten my heart broken before. Um, a long, long time ago in high school. Uh, thank God it hasn't happened again. But I definitely got my heart broken before. And yeah, I mean, this is just it's a learning experience. At what age? I think I was like maybe sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, I was still in I was still in high school. Yeah, I was still in high school, and it was definitely a learning experience. I've definitely learned, I've definitely learned a better taste in guys and just people in general. And yeah, that happened years ago though. I'm about to be 28, so I don't really consider that really like a heartbreak now. It's just like okay, well, so, it was something that I went through. How did it happen? Huh? How did it happen? Oh, um, let's just say that one of us was a little more invested than the other one. So that's how that happened. And then you saw that it wasn't leading anywhere. You broke up with him or he was one that broke up with you. No, nah, he actually broke up with me. That's why I was heartbroken. Because I, you know, I, you know, because when you're, when you're in high school, you're so in love. You think that, oh, I don't see myself with anybody else. We're going to be dating this guy forever and ever we're gonna have kids a family just like just like loving basketball so <laughs> so um yeah so when he broke up with me it was just like wow like oh my god i'm so devastated i don't want to go to school i want to cut my hair off and get tattoos so yeah it was just i was really distraught <laughs> but like i said i was 16 17 and stuff like that i just like is you know chip off of what i'm like now so how did you handle it um, with grace and with poise, I showed up to school the next day looking extremely hot. And yeah. All right. Um, biggest fear for you as a pro? My biggest fear for me as a pro is always getting injured. I mean, you don't want to go into a game thinking, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to get hurt. But uh, that dude 
come across your mind sometimes, especially playing against certain athletes. Uh, when they play against an import play or or an American play, they think that they have to play extra hard and be extra aggressive to prove a point. So sometimes that you know that worries me getting hurt and not being able to play the game of basketball that I love so much. So yeah, definitely getting hurt was probably like my main, you know, as a name who are. But, oh God, I hope you're not about the. I hope you're not about to answer me, ask me that question. No, I'll probably, <laughs> I'll probably rephrase it. <laughs> Felicia Anuna is asking if you were to choose between an American man and also a Nigerian man, you know, having a taste of both worlds. But for me, I will also add this one to being in France, I've been in Germany, and also basketball. Um, out of all these countries, great their men. How do you think of the women? Um, okay, Portugal is definitely at the bottom because I don't, I was, when I go overseas, I don't really be looking or checking for guys. Uh, France was, I mean, Portugal was definitely got the, their guys at the bottom. Uh, I'll say after Portugal with the low ranking, I'll give uh, maybe Germany the next ranking. Um, like I said, I don't really be looking for guys, but the guys I did come across, it wasn't like, you know, a little creepy-ish. Uh, Budapest and France definitely are were a lot better because I feel like you have more tourists there. You can find more people you can relate to. Um, and to answer your question, if I have to choose between an American and, Niger and a Nigerian guy, uh, I don't know. I've never dated a Nigerian guy before, so... I can't really like say who's better. I definitely have, you know, had my fair share of dated the dating world as far as American guys, and you know, some of them are you know breath of the, breath is a uh, breath of fresh air, and then all the other guys are just like, okay, I need to run far away. And then you have some guys who kind of like, oh, okay, maybe he's you know he's kind of cool, he it, it might work, and then two or three months later. You, you dodging bullets, so I don't know. Right now, I'm just relaxing, and yeah, I can't choose between Nigerian American because I haven't dated a Nigerian guy. So when I date a Nigerian guy, I make sure I answer that question. All right, um, Kalechi Anuna is watching. Kalechi is single, and um, I think Kalechi already got a lot going on. No, he doesn't. I, I spoke to I'm him. I, I, I spoke to him. I think. On Wednesday, on the Wednesday edition of the Insta Live, and then he spoke at length about um, how he broke women's heart, you know, and all that and all that. But presently, presently, he's single, and then <laughs> can shoot his shot so that um, a tiger and a tigress can come together and give birth to a champion. Um, moving uh -huh. on, moving on, um, most difficult opponent ever faced. Most difficult opponent face was Molly. Only because playing that atmosphere at Molly and the fans are like literally sitting right on top of you and the girls back then were huge in 2017. I don't know why they, they didn't have the same girls but them girls were huge. Going to the basket felt like getting hit by a train every single time. Um, they definitely made us feel every minute of the game. They didn't back down to us. They didn't. They just wanted it, and we wanted it more at the end of the day. But just to have that type of force being thrown at us, plus the crowd being on top of us, uh, yeah, definitely one of the uh, toughest games. Let's take our mind back to that game. That was the semifinals of the Afro Basket in 2017. Mm -hmm. They were the host. The winner of that game will get to the finals and also have a title shot. The winner of the game will have uh, an automatic ticket to the, um, what's it called now, the World Cup in Spain. And somebody is saying, I think um, Evelyn Akato fouled out in that game. Um, how difficult was, was the game for you facing all those pressures and trying to? to meet up with that expectation, um, you know, back home? It was very difficult because I felt like when you're playing a game, 
you only want to go the only thing that you want to have in your mind is going in and play to win you know you're not thinking about the pressures that everybody has on you you're not thinking that i have to go out here and win i have to go out here and succeed there's no other option there you don't get you don't get you don't get celebration for losing or so our only option was success. So the fact that we had that pressure from ourselves and from our country, from our family and friends, it was a little overwhelming at times, but I felt like once we stepped on the court and we realized right now we're playing for each other. Overall, we're playing for our country, you know, our friends. We're playing for the people who have those expectations for us. But right now, in this moment, for 40 minutes, we are playing for each other. We have to have each other's backs. And I think that once we realize that, it kind of allowed the pressure of everything else to kind of lift the weight off our shoulders. And once that happened, we were able to carry the game. And that's what ultimately separates us from, you know, from other teams, just being able to really solidify our chemistry on the court and play for what it is is happening at that moment. For a lot of girls and guys in Europe and America, mm-hmm. deciding to play for Nigeria in, in, in the past has been a very difficult um, mm-hmm. decision for them to make. Some went ahead to play for other countries. Um, I think at the last World Cup, I saw Nigerian descent playing for Canada. They played for US. Uh, the, 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 the Woman Mountain playing for Australia also being a Nigerian, um, you know, the father being a Nigerian and all that and all that. Um, now, let's look at it for you. Has playing for Nigeria, Nigeria opened any door for you in career-wise? Yes. Yes. Uh, playing, playing for Nigeria has definitely opened a lot of doors. Um, do you mean on the court or off the court? On the court, it allowed me to play in one of the top leagues in the country, that's France. Um, it allowed me to, you know, win the MVP award. It allowed me to, to win the top five player award. It allowed me to be recognized on all these different platforms because I'm performing uh, well in these tournaments. And on, while I'm with the national team, um, outside of the court, it, it allows me. It allowed me to build a fan base. So when I create like my small business, like Kuru Cosmetics, I have those supporters and I have those fans who want to support me because they know how hard I work on the court. Now they want to support my brand off the court. So there's definitely open doors as far as like my brand, as far as like me want to help out in the community and, you know, just do well overall. So wearing that green and white has definitely made people look at me differently and know that I can bring, you know, so many different things to the table. Do you see other Nigerians playing for other countries as an act of being non-patriotic or it was just something that they needed to decide and then it's their decision to make? Um, I think both. I think that um, some players genu- genu- genuinely want to play for their country and represent their country and really show people what they can do. And then I also think that you have people who who come on a team because they feel like this is their only option to, you know, further their career in basketball and really feel like they want to be part of a family and really want people to see that with what they can bring to the to the table from, you know, from their talent. I do think that, um, you know, people at the end of the day, people make decisions that best fit their life and their lifestyle. Um <laughs> Like I said, I didn't have any options, so choosing to play for Nigeria was definitely one of the one of the options that I'm happy that I chose with. On the court, you you are uh, basketball when it comes to the women national team. Have you have you explored or uh, explored that ambassadorial role in trying to convince other girls, other talents, probably established ones, and or also the uh, the upcoming ones on what it takes to play for Nigeria or how, how, how good is it? How good is it to play for Nigeria? Yes, all the girls, all the young girls and guys that reach out to me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter who ask me these questions, I always tell them, like, regardless of what it is, whether it's a training or a practice or a game, give 100% and give your all because it only takes one person to notice you. It only takes one person to really say this person has the talent. They can compete with us. They can play on our level. And all you once you have that one person behind you to to kind of like validate what you can bring to the table, it's definitely easy to to represent a country and to represent a team and to you know show what you can do. Uh, can you give us a sneak peek into some of these girls that you've been in discussions with? Uh, no. Why? Because they might show up to the training camp, so I don't want to put their business on blast. 
Got the moment of the Olympics. Huh? You you always have your, your plans mapped out. So, okay, by yes. You be able to do that. What will be the implication of that postponement on your career and also your business? Um, career-wise, I think that to po the postponement was definitely bittersweet. Uh, like I said in an interview a while ago, I think that this time allowed us to kind of get more time to really focus on what we, what we need to improve as a, as on as a team so we can compete at our best. I think that um, it definitely gives us time to really fo refocus and really think about what we want to bring to the world and what we want to show the world and, you know, how to how the time in between from now and then, how that time is going to shape us. And I think it's really important that we just take it one day at a time and really try to focus on getting through all this COVID stuff and then, you know, putting our minds and our schedules back on track to prepare for the Olympics. Um, as far as my business, um, the COVID-19 didn't affect me at all. I've had time to mold my baby Kalu Cosmetics, my brand, into something so beautiful. I started her in 2015. And because I started playing overseas, I didn't really have the time to, you know, get the products I needed to really push the marketing forward, to really show people what Kalu Cosmetics was about. But this whole virus thing really gave me time to just, like, really focus and show people who I am outside of the court. You know, I'm this lady. I love makeup. I love lipstick. And that's what my brand is about, you know, versatility, beauty, and just showing, you know, what it means to be confident within yourself. So this uh, this COVID-19 definitely does not affect my business. I'm happy everybody has been shopping online for it. Products have been selling out. I'm actually working on a restock. We're going to be restocking next week. So this virus has, honestly, it's been a blessing and a curse. I mean, um, I'm definitely troubled and saddened by the lo the uh, lives it's, it's taken and the family is affected. And um, I hope, hopefully all this ends soon, but I also want people to know that this time right now that we have, the free time we have is very crucial it's important to you to just like focus on your brand, focus on you, and just focus on coming out of this situation better. And that's all I'm trying to do. And I think that me building Kalu Cosmetics and me, you know, building, rebuilding this brand and showing how it started and showing how you know I created it and evolved it just within this time, within this two months that we've been, that I've been home, uh, definitely shows that you know it's, it's a blessing and a curse. I'm I'm happy. Advice for kids back home who, who are trying to look up to you, who are trying to become pro professionals, and also who are trying to combine basketball and um, education. What's your advice? What's my advice to them is to just never give up, keep dreaming, keep pushing, uh, whatever you want to do in life. Give it a hundred and ten percent. Work on it every day, not just when people are watching. Uh, hard work and dedication, but most importantly, don't forget to have fun. When you love something, when you when you have a job, and you love to do it, it 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 rewards you with happiness, with financial stability, with mental stability. You know, spiritual growth. Just just keep pushing. You know, stay motivated, stay humbled. You know, always, always be a biggest fan, your biggest supporter, and just, you know, give it all you got. D-Tigers and D-Tigers. Yes. Who, who will you, uh, what, uh, I know that you probably want to say that the D-Tigers achieved more um, than the D-Tigers. Uh, did they? Hmm. I'm talking about <laughs> D-Tigers more than the D-Tigers. The Tigers guys, right? Yes. Yeah, no, I said, hmm, did they? I don't know. Because um, for you guys, you, you won the, the gold in 2017, 2019, because mm -hmm. of the of uh, the World Cup, which they are still struggling to, to do, mm -hmm. uh, despite the availability of talent, you know. Who do you think Nigerians appreciate more, the men or the women? <sighs> I can't answer that. I don't think that, okay, this is how I'm going to answer it. I don't think that 
uh, Nigeria appreciates anybody more. Like I don't think they love the I don't think they love the girls more. They love the guys or they love the girls more. The girls more they love the guys. I don't think that's true. I think that um, because of of men basketball being so popular most of Nigerian fans kind of lean towards the men because their game could be a little more exciting. You know, they have the dunks, they have the alley hoops, they have the, uh, the, the crazy, all the crazy fans. So I think that people kind of gravitate towards the, the Tigers and men because they can get, they can get the, the extra excitement and what, and what comes with the game. But I also, I also think Nigerians love us women too, because we, they see how far we've come. They see that, you know, we can get down and dirty. They see that we can compete and play with anybody. So I don't think it's, it go it's like who appreciate who, who's more. I think it just goes by who is, who is hot and ready and popular at that specific moment. And then, Nigerian fans would just hop on and be there to support. What about uh, the level of acceptance right now? Um, the level of acceptance right now is definitely coming. I don't know. There's a lot. I don't. I don't know. I gotta be honest. I told y'all be honest, so I don't. Yeah. Um, I don't strong points on the court. My strong point in the court is definitely my defense. Like, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the best player in the NBA, WNBA. If I'm tasked with guarding you, that will be my job. I'm going to guard you until the clock says zero, zero, zero. I will guard you all the way to your locker room. I will guard you all the way to your team bus. Like, that is my job. I love basketball. I love the game of basketball. Uh, like I've, I don't know. I think I, I, it's, it's because I grew up playing, playing, you know, that defense, like I told you that, that down and dirty defense and still a ball, always going to get your hand in the ball. So that's definitely my strong point. Uh, I've always tried to, I've always proud of myself of being the best defender. Um, definitely one of the best lockdown defenders. And I take pride in that because it's, it's, it's it's rewarding knowing that I can stop one of the greatest players from scoring, or one of the, or getting the getting the great player's head, or or make a great player feel like um you know playing up to a level. So definitely defense is probably one of my uh strongest points for sure. So where do you see uh, Nigerian basketball in the next five years? Four to five years. Uh, the what I see us yes, the Tigers in four years, five years. Um, I see us uh, at the podium. I see us winning another Afro basket. I see us um, making it to the to the medal stages of the World Cup. I see us, um, yeah. And I, I just honestly, I just see us succeeding. I just see us, you know, working hard. I see us, you know having each other's backs. I see us, you know, fighting through all the adversity that we deal with, you know, from our own team and from, from everybody else. I see us fighting through all that. I just I just see us, you know, being a team who can who can overcome all these different obstacles that, that we faced since I started playing with the team in two thousand sixteen. How financially rewarding is it for you playing basketball? Oh, it's uh it's very rewarding for me because I feel like I, you know, like I like nice things. I love to have fun. I love to hang out. I love to be able to travel where I want. So I feel like with basketball, I'm I, I'm able to do that with the pay that I receive. I'm able to buy whatever I want, do whatever I want, hang out, and you know, I'm able to to do what I want. And that's ultimately, you know, that's that's always my goal to not have to ask somebody for anything or ask ask my mom to take care of things or. You know, so it's it's very rewarding for me because I'm able to pay my bills, I'm able to pay my mom bills sometimes, I'm able to do whatever I want, travel where I want. So it's it's very rewarding for me. And then this this level of uh, financial independence, uh, mm -hmm. uh, your status is is probably way higher than a lot of guys that you might probably come across. Um, looking at the fact that uh, you also travel a lot, you, you move around, you change teams, you change countries, environment, has this affected your personal life in terms of relationship in, in any way negative? Uh, for sure. For sure. Um, traveling and, you know, being away from home nine to ten months out of the year has definitely put a strain on any type of uh, romantic relationship I've tried to have. 
Um, I've definitely built some good friendships over over the uh, over the years, but you know, yeah, definitely traveling has definitely stopped me from being able to you know find that special one who can you know deal with my traveling so much and deal with uh, the distance. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely that's the only downfall of you know playing overseas. I've definitely I know for sure that there's people out there who are capable of having long distance relationships and who who had successful relationships playing overseas, but I haven't had that that opportunity yet. So that's that that's the only downfall for me playing overseas is not being able to have that you know that that connection or that spouse or partner to be able to you know travel there with me and be with me and you know us have you know a strong connection of uh while i'm playing and i and it's unfortunate because i do want to play for like another five or six more years so there's no telling if you know if uh, the mr right comes by how do you feel how do i what feel the void uh just by playing basketball i mean there's no uh let me okay let me make this one clear there's no void like there's no I don't I don't need a man or I don't really I don't feel like oh my god I gotta have a boy I gotta have a boyfriend I gotta have a husband I, I don't feel that way at all like if I find one cool if I don't cool no problem with me but um no pressure just, from the yeah it's no it's huh no pressure from your parents to uh yeah. no not yet because I'm still young I'm 28 I still ha definitely have time so that I don't really feel no pressure from them yet but I know once I hit 30, they're going to be like, okay, what's going on? Especially you're not getting father. It's in the yeah. way you get. are you getting out? I want to my <laughs> Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, yeah, I just feel the boy just by playing basketball, staying busy, you know, working on things outside of basketball, and yeah. Okay, but, yeah. Uh, I didn't notice this, but probably somebody somewhere notice that and then uh, all this conspiracy theory. Um, the person is asking, do you think Neka Ogumike snubbed you during the um, All-Star 5 presentation at the OQT? Oh, no. I just thought they uh, they chose based on the, st the statistics of that game or maybe uh, I'm not sure if it was that game overall but I, she did play well against us so I think that's probably why she got the uh, award. So I wasn't, uh, no, I didn't feel that way at all. When people get, uh, get awards over me, I don't really feel snubbed or upset. I'm just like, okay, you know, good job, good work. Maybe next year. You know, I don't really get upset at things like that. All right, all right, all right. Um, what else, what else? What else? About the bio clock, this guy. What? <laughs> the, your bio clock, right? Um, <laughs> Why am I sweating? Uh, Your inspiration, what inspires you to, to play basketball? Um, growing up and seeing seeing the women do it, uh, one of my favorite plays is Cappy Pondexter, and growing up watching her play, kind of what motiv what motivated me to keep playing. Um, and yeah, just seeing like the the way that you can transform yourself to being. A girly girl on the court, on this, you know, off the off the court, this girly girl, or you have a specific style, you carry yourself a specific way, and then you step on the court, and you could just transform into a whole different person. And Kathy Products did that a lot, and she she had that killer in her, and she had that athleticism in her. So that kind of inspired me to kind of keep pushing and to keep playing and to kind of sh uh, show people that I can do, I can do both. I can be me, and I can also be this other person on the court. And you know that's what kept me uh, keep. That's what kept me keep pushing. Your role model. My role model. Mm -hmm. Definitely my mom. Yeah, my mom is like the ish. Um, I love her to death. She's definitely uh, a woman that I can definitely see myself growing up to be and want to be. Um, she's definitely the true definition of a fighter, a survivor. And she's definitely have uh, molded me into becoming a woman who can who can withstand, you know, everything that I've, I've endured, you know, all the struggles and the and the the challenges and the tribulations. You know, if it wasn't for her, I don't think that I've had I would have had the strength to get through all that because she showed me what it is to get through those type of things. So I definitely commend her on that. Um, most 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 times we see. The girl child being close to the father, while the man child is close to the mother. Um, why are you different? 
Um, I think because I grew up with my mom more. Um, me and my mom been through literally hell and hot water together. So I think that we've kind of had that be that best friend relationship. And that best friend relationship kind of created itself because of the mom and relationship we had of being with each other all the time and, you know, being around her 24 seven growing up and being a mommy's girl. So I, I don't know. I think I've, I'm a mommy's girl because I've, I've grown up with her. I'm pretty sure if I grew up with my mom and my dad in the same house, I probably would have been a daddy's girl cause I'm super spoiled. But uh, yeah, I think because I grew up mostly with my mom uh, in the house, I've definitely became a mommy's girl. Um, what drink are you having? Huh? Asking. What drink are you having? Somebody. Oh, um, I was drinking cranberry juice. What's that? Cranberry juice. What's that? What's cranberry juice? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. What's that? It's like it's cranberry juice. I <laughs> I know you've had cranberry juice before, so stop it. That's why I'm looking like what? That's, that's cranberry juice. <laughs> right. I love cranberry juice. It's good for your uh, kidneys. Yeah, with what? Huh? It's good with what? It's that's good for your kidneys. Yeah. Oh, that's why I'm using it to mix my drinks. Yeah. Uh, presently, you are not playing for any WNBA team, but you, you earlier told us that um, there are plans for you to feature, uh, mm -hmm. to go back to the US and show the world where you know where the media is all about um, the NBA and also the NBA. Uh, through that, you can also show what stuff you made up. Now, you have a new favorable or favorite team that you think uh, you want to play for? I definitely wanted to play for the Liberty because uh, that's a New York team. I live in New Jersey. That's literally like a 15, 20 minute drive for me. So it definitely would have been nice to play for the Liberty. If not, I definitely don't mind going to LA, playing for the Sparks. Um, I definitely don't mind going to Atlanta to play for the Dream. Um, so yeah, any one of those two teams. So the New York Liberty was be my first option, and the Atlanta Dream will be my second option, and the LA Sparks will be my third option. In the last um, one year, your career has been on the rise. Uh, Afro Basket MVP, Afro Basket winner, um, Olympic bound, top five in the French League, and the, the best point guard in the French League. Um, how did you attain this height? How do I, how did I attain it? Yeah. I just kept it, um, I kept it professional. You know, every day I showed up to practice, I, I worked hard. I gave a hundred percent. I, you know, I let my teammates, I remind them all the time that I had that back that I was going to give a hundred percent all the time on the court, off the court. And honestly, I didn't really think about the accolades too much. Because I feel like that those accolades don't make me who I am as a person. I feel like the hard work and the determination and dedication that I give to the game and my teammates, that's what makes me as a person. And I would have been happy even receiving awards from my teammates, you know. And I think that's what that's what kind of keeps me pushing. And that's what kind of keeps me going and give 100% and going hard regardless of the game, regardless of the practice or regardless of, you know, what's happening. You know, my teammates definitely, you know, push me to, to, to do that, to give my all, regardless of the accolades. Did you did you chat with um, Neka Gumike after the, the, the Olympic qualifiers? You uh, no. A, you, no, no, no. No communication of, of, of any sort? No. Okay. I um, didn't talk to uh, any of them, actually. Somebody's asking you that, um, what brand would you suggest? Uh, I told them Ocean Spray. Okay. Um, so you drink alcohol, right? Uh, I mean, I dibble and dab in it a little bit. Your mom will probably watch you one of these days. And then. <laughs> so you might not want to answer that. Um, this this is your amazing run. Mm -hmm. How long do you think you're going to continue? Because, you know, you've had issues with injuries and all that. Mm -hmm. But right now, you are possibly closer to El Dorado and then everything is smooth. The accolades are coming, you are getting your deserved recognition. How do you uh, how long do you think this is gonna continue? I think very, it will continue, huh? Very, very realistic. Um you talk about my reign as an individual or the reign of 
Team Nigeria. Talking about you as a person. Oh, um, me as a person being realistic, I think that all this will continue to go on for as long as I keep working. I mean, if I, f I feel like every day if I have the mindset that um, I'm going to accomplish my goals, I'm going to be financially stable, I'm going to be mentally happy, I'm going to be spiritually in tune with, you know, my God, I'm going to, if I have all those visions and if, if I continue to manifest that energy and if I continue to manifest what I want out of my life, it's going to happen. I feel like God already has this plan for me and I've come this far and I've come this far because of my hard work, because of my dedication, because of staying true to myself and, and wanting to be successful in my life. And I feel like if I continue on the same path, everything else is, is going to keep happening. It's may, it may be days when I don't feel like working hard. It may be days when I do get lazy or maybe days where um, I, I'm not in the mood to kind of like really give my dreams my all 100%. But those are the days when I, when I do have to give it. And I remind myself, listen, you've come a long way. Like you can't really sit on your, on your tail and really get comfortable because you can't accomplish your dreams that way. So I think me putting the pressure on myself, as long as I continue to work hard, give my all, give 100%. I mean, this rain is going to continue. Like, my, my, my light is going to continue to shine bright if I keep adding fuel to the fire. As long as that keeps happening, then everything else is going to continue to happen and fall into place. All these all this awards, all these accolades, do you get carried away at some point? Probably not carried away in the negative sense, but, you know, you're just in the midst of people and then you're talking all of a sudden. Remember, oh, man, I'm the current MVP of the Afro Basket. Mm -hmm. Man, I've been to the World Cup and then... It kicks in and then you're, 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 you start as an insurance. Do, do, you, do, you, do you do that? Uh, no, I don't. No, not at all. Um, I've lost the big head syndrome in college. Uh, yeah, I, I had a real big head in my freshman year in college because I was a girl coming from Jersey to Georgia. So it was very different for me. But yeah, I've, I've deflated that whole ego and having that big head mentality because it, it gets you nowhere. I mean, you can be, I don't care how good you are. I don't care, you know, how talented you are or how your name or what your name is. If you if you're arrogant or if you have this big ego like you're like you're just too good and you have this and you have that, then people won't really respect you and they won't they won't enjoy you. They won't they won't they won't uh, enjoy your company or, or or being around you. And I think that I've come this far because I've remained humble, because I've remained, you know, true to myself and kind of really stayed ten toes ten toes down and not let all these accolades really get to my head. Because if you take away the MVP, if you take away the, the top five, if you, if you take away all those accolades, at the end of the day, I'm still as an Ekalu. I'm still me. So I figured if I still be me outside of all those things, people can't, people can't, oh, you know, we only like her because she's this. We, we like her because she's got that. No, I've, I've been the same me before I got the awards, even after I got the awards. So I think me, me definitely saying level-headed has definitely kind of really show people my true colors and that's i'm very humble i'm not arrogant at all and if i win a word i won it and i'm happy with it but i'm i'm more so Sorry about that. Um, technical issue on my part. My internet went off, so I had to charge a bit and then, you know, reconnect. So, um, you need to get your Wi-Fi together over there. <laughs> so, um, 
you were saying something, you know, never allowing those things to get to your head. Yeah, uh, I'm just, I just was saying to just, I just remain humble. That's all. Okay. Um, your favorite Nigerian food? Do you have any favorite Nigerian food? Igusi soup and powdered yam. Mm -hmm. When I go oh, like this, <laughs> and then it oh. just roll, when, when it roll, when it rolls down there, you have to just scoop it per scoop it perfectly and then you <sighs> Yep. Um who is this um Bakri Bala? Bakri Bala zero zero. Is it your friend or something? No, I can't see any comments. No, because probably your comment sessions are turned off. Yeah, I can't everything is like frozen on the side. Okay. Because it's 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 been attacking me and then rooting for you. I don't know why. <laughs> Let's talk about your beauty line. Um, yes. Cool cosmetics. Is. Here it is right here. Wait, should I turn it? <laughs> That's better? It's not. Oh, wait. Which way do I have to? What about now? It's not. Uh, okay, maybe that doesn't work like that. But yeah, so like I said, I started my brand in 2015, Kalu Cosmetics. And I originally started it because I wanted to find an, an, just an extra income. But, you know, once I got the hang of it and started learning about the cosmetics business, about the makeup business, um, I fell in love with it. I'm just like, wow, like, I love lipstick. I love lip gloss. This is something I can really connect to my fans, to my sisters, to the people around me. So I came up with the brand and, I'm, and Kalu Cosmetics was the first thing I thought of because it's, it's, pe people will know it's me. And then I spelled the cosmetics with a K, so that's really cool. Um, yeah, so I started this brand, and uh, about two years in, once I really buckled down and got serious and started to learn the ins and outs of the makeup business and just be an entrepreneur, I fell in love with it. Uh, like I said, I got I got home in March. I started to really buckle down and really, you know, put things into play about uh, photo shoots, websites, really trying to make my brand better and really make it so that it, it can compete with these other national uh, makeup companies. So once I did that, I was able to relaunch uh, my company. I actually just relaunched on Sunday and Sunday at, at 12 a.m. at 12.10, 12.05, some of the, like four items were sold out. So I'm definitely happy to see how far I've, you know, how far I've molded my brand into something, into something special. Um, like I said, it's about just promoting uh, diversity, versatility, beauty, and just, you know, a, just show the world a different definition of, of what beauty looks like. It, beauty doesn't look this way or that way, or beauty doesn't have this color or that color. It's, beauty is, is how you feel and, 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 and what you bring to the table and what, what you show what you showed to the world and uh, creating cool cosmetics. I wanted to just, you know, I wanted everything to be an extension of that. And yeah, it's foolproof, kiss proof. It doesn't come off at all. You guys see that I've been drinking. It doesn't come off at all. It's waterproof. It's, it's smudge proof. Uh, yeah, I just pride myself on just having the best products and giving, giving uh, my people the best things. So yeah, I'm very happy about how far I've come. Uh, my plan with Clue Cosmetics is to open up a small little boutique one day or to have my brand in department stores like Walmart or Sephora or CVS. So yeah, I'm excited. I've definitely came a long way. I'm working on a restock within the next two weeks. And I just hope that, you know, Clue Cosmetics go, go main, mainstream. That's my goal. You know, I have worldwide shipping so people can ship from, they can order in Nigeria they can order anywhere in the world in France. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited. And everywhere I go, I always wear cool cosmetics. Nobody is going to represent your brand more than you do. Now we know that um, starting a business is always very difficult. You know, mm -hmm. and then you need to capital and then having to compete with um, more established brands, not necessarily better brands, but, mm -hmm. but you know, more established brands, names and all that. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us how easy it was and then the process it, it, it entailed, you know, for people who are watching you, or for people who, who are trying to lay their hands on something that, want, that probably want to yeah. start. Yeah, my, my advice is to just find something that you're good at, whether you want to be an entrepreneur, whether you want to pick up a new hobby or a new skill. 
whatever it is that you're good at, comment, research it, and just give it just give it your all, give it a hundred percent. When I first started my research, uh, my research, it took me two years to kind of really sit down and come up, come up with a plan and a name for what I wanted to do. So definitely, I definitely say if you want to be an entrepreneur, definitely do your research, take your time out to figure out what type of field you want to go in, think about your market, think about your audience, think about how you want to go, think about your four-year, five-year plan of how you want your company to have its longevity. Think about the things that uh, that people might like or my, what you can offer to people like giveaways. Marketing is going to be extremely important if you want to be an entrepreneur. And I just say, yeah, just do your research and whatever it is, whatever you decide to sell or whatever you decide to make, just do it with 100%. 100% and, you know, so be a biggest supporter, be a biggest fan, promote your business, no matter where you are, promote, 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 stand t stay ten, to ten toes down, support your brand, because, I mean, that's, if, if your brand is your message and what you want to do and what you want to be successful at, then you have to have, you have to give other people with the confidence in your brand as well. You know, why, what separates your brand from this brand? Or why should I choose your brand from, from this brand, you know? Try to find ways that separate yourself from everybody else. Um, on the stable of, of this unique brand, mm -hmm. I know that you have um, some, many products. Can you can you highlight the products that you have um, ready made now for for the market? Yes. So right now for the market, I have lipstick, liquid lipstick. This is what I have on. It's very liquid matte, as you can see. It doesn't come off. I have lip glosses. I have lip liners. I have mascara. For those of you who don't know what what uh, mascara is, it's a little black stuff that I put on my eyes to make it. Can you guys see that little that little flare? You see that? <laughs> That's mascara. <laughs> I have uh, oh, and I also have lip scrub. So the lip scrub is kind of like shampoo for the lips. It keeps your lips very soft and smooth. That sold out in five minutes. I actually restocked and had to get more, but I also have that as well for the future. I have more different uh more lipstick colors more lip gloss colors i'll have foundations and eyeshadows and more mascaras and different colors so as the months go on and as the guy as the years go on i'll i'll be introducing new products and new colors so people can see how kalu cosmetics is coming together as a whole so starting out right now i just have the basics lipsticks lip gloss mascara lip liners everything for the lips i have right now for the guys, I don't have anything right now, but I'm working on I'm working on the special I'm working on the special I'm working on the special chapstick for the guys. I thought you said you were not in the comments. Huh? I thought you said you were not in the comments. Oh, I see them now. You see them now. So yeah. who, who who is uh I see Kalechi. He said what you got for the guys. Who is Bella or Barkley Bella? Zero zero. No, I can't yeah. see that. I can only see Starting from Matt the Wash. Okay. So, um, guys. Oh, I have a, I have a lip scrub for the guys. The lip scrub is unisex. You can use it, but it's sold out. So I'm definitely working on restocking. As in guys who use lip, 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 lip scrub? Yeah, it's like a lip scrub. Like, you know, to, when your lips are always dry, you put on a scrub, you rub the scrub on your lips for about five to ten minutes, you wash it off, and then you, you're fine. Now, as as a man. Yeah. Oh. It's called. Oh. It's like it's like a shampoo, but for the lips. It's really really good. Oh, that's that's amazing. Um, I know that out of this, some of these products, you you have um, some that are problematic that are not moving as fast as others. Are you thinking of probably reshaping in future and then um, dropping some and and focusing more on those ones that. Instant eats with your, your your customers. Yeah, can you say that again, please? Sorry, you was going in and out. You, if you have different products in the shelf, oh some yes, faster than the others. Um, are you thinking of probably looking at focusing more on the ones that resonate more with um, the consumers rather than just being general? Yeah. So. So as far as the, uh, the products, the products that sold out fast, I immediately asked for a restock for those. So that was that, that was really my plan to to restock on the colors and the products that sell out fast. I'm definitely gonna restock. What's, what's, what's that product? Huh? Oh, so I sold out out of, out of two lipsticks. I sold out out of all my lip glosses, which were three of them. I sold out of all three lipsticks, all all three lip glosses. I sold out of all my lip scrubs. 
and my plan is to restock on all the products that I that I sold out of. So right now, all the products that I that I sold out of are in production as we speak. The colors that I have left over, I still have those. I'm gonna wait for those to sell out before I even order more because I still have like maybe five or four left. So it's still a lot of.